Hey everybody, it looks like I won't be seeing movies in theaters for a while, but there are a few things that came out on digital so I don't have to leave my own home. Yay! One of them is The Hunt, not to be confused with the much better 2012 Danish film called The Hunt. This American 2020 The Hunt is not a remake and these movies have absolutely nothing to do with each other, but since they share the same title, I figured I may as well mention that Thomas Vinterberg's The Hunt is actually an amazing movie that you should all see. Anyway, The Hunt 2020 is a $14 million Blumhouse film that was supposed to come out last year, but then some shootings happened in the United States, so they delayed the release. But then Joker came out and was wildly successful, so Universal was like, hey, wait a minute, everybody thought that that movie was controversial and it wound up to be a gigantic hit. Shit, why didn't we actually release our movie? Fuck. So they decided to try releasing it again in March on Friday the 13th, and at this point, the entire ad campaign was just gloating about how controversial it is. I'm sorry, but this was not the most talked about movie of this year or last year. I was kind of annoyed by this marketing because from what I could tell the movie just seemed so basic anyway. Now that I've actually seen it, yes it was kind of basic, but I still enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It's kind of a horror comedy thing that doesn't take itself super seriously. A bunch of people are kidnapped and wake up and they're like oh no, some rich people are hunting us for sport that's never been done before. In the movie's defense, I can at least say that there were quite a few deaths that came as a surprise. Usually in these kinds of movies, every single moment is completely predictable but I can't say the same for this one. Overall, the movie had a fun tone and was mostly enjoyable. It wasn't terribly shot. Betty Gilpin's performance was actually really good as well. Now, when talking about these aspects, I'm not going to pretend like the movie was amazing. Mostly, it was just better than I expected. The one thing that kind of does drag the movie down a bit is its politics. And I don't mean that I disagree with a political perspective that was presented in the film. What I mean is that the political angle overall just feels so forced and unnecessary. Basically, the people who are kidnapped and hunted are concerned conservatives who have said problematic things online and the rich people hunting them are parody level woke liberals. It's a type of movie where it feels as though it's insisting it's saying something but it's really not. It almost feels as though it included this aspect for the sake of being controversial and that's it. Because despite this movie being political, it doesn't really make any statements or observations. To say that this movie is a political satire would be to say that Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer movies are parody films. Like sure, one could argue that they might be trying to be those things, but at the end of the day, they're just references. Like, yep, conservatives love guns and they sometimes say problematic things on the internet, okay. Yep, some liberals try really hard to score woke points, okay. You're not saying anything, you're just making references. There were a couple points where these moments were humorous, but for the most part, they were just obnoxious. And there's no real reason why this angle even needs to be in the film. There are plenty of other reasons you could give as to why these rich people are hunting human beings for sport. The only thing it adds to the movie is that they get to say, hey, look at me, we're controversial. Look at how divisive this movie is. Don't you want to see it? It's the most talked about movie of the whole year. But yeah, aside from that, it was fine. If you don't let yourself get tricked into trying to interpret some sort of political angle to this film, you can enjoy it as some dumb horror gore comedy kind of fun thing. It was a decent watch it once and then be done with it and never touch it again kind of movie. So yeah, if you're looking for some time to kill in your quarantine, then then maybe check it out. And if you haven't seen Thomas Vinterberg's The Hunt, then definitely check that one out first, even though it is completely unrelated except for the title. As for this one, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Another movie I saw that decided to do a digital release early was Pixar's Onward. Now, when the trailer for this movie came out, it seemed as though people were reacting a bit more negatively compared to other Pixar movies. As for myself, there was a part of me that was cautiously optimistic about it. I was excited to see how Pixar would tackle this fantasy medieval wizard dragon sort of thing. I was considering watching it in theaters, but then the Metascore came out and I was like, uh-oh. If I'm not even big on the Pixar movies that are rated much higher than that, I'm not sure what I'll get out of this one. Thankfully, it came out on digital, so I didn't have to see it in a theater full of annoying children and coronavirus. And after watching it, I can understand why this one was not as well received as many other Pixar joints. As is standard with Pixar movies, the animation and music were well done. And in terms of the story, it had a lot of the same issues that are present in a lot of other recent Pixar movies. Much of the film felt very repetitive, everything was incredibly predictable, there were incredibly obvious setups for plot devices that would appear later, there were plenty of attempts at humor that were just not funny at all. Those biker pixie things were super annoying, and even more so when they were added into the actual conflict. They even recycled the exact same joke from Ratatouille. You got a problem, Shades! Answer me when I'm 
talking to you. I mean, it's bad enough that the main character of this film already looks a lot like Linguini. Now, these issues I've mentioned so far are not really at the core of what makes this movie so poorly received in comparison to other Pixar films. What really winds up separating this film is its lack of interesting characters. The two main characters are not only cliched, but it seems as though they were written for other actors. Jack Black would have been a much more appropriate choice for Chris Pratt's character, and Tom Holland didn't really add anything to the film at all. I didn't even know it was him until I looked it up right now. What really wound up hurting this movie is that these characters didn't really have any chemistry. It was difficult to care about their journey or their relationship. There just wasn't really anything there. At least Shrek and Donkey had a fun and watchable dynamic. Speaking of which, this isn't really even a fantasy medieval wizard dragon type of thing at all. There are hints of it here and there, but it's really just a boring, regular life kind of setting, which is kind of the gimmick in a way, I guess. Like, man, we all used to do magic and then technology happened. It, it sucks that nobody's Amish. There wasn't really all that much they could do with this concept, and they ran out of ideas pretty quickly, it seemed. Oh, hey, it's like a medieval family restaurant with the medieval claw game inside of it. Haha. <laughs> I feel like I much rather would have had the entire story being told in an actual fantasy universe rather than a, hey, this used to be a fantasy, but now it's just normal kind of universe. Some of the characters are centaurs, and some of them have one eye. Isn't that crazy? Speaking of characters with one eye, we now have Pixar's first LGBT character. Yay. Way to go, Disney. You're so progressive, and you're not just pretending to be to score fake woke points. And to literally no one's surprise, it is limited to one throwaway line that can easily be edited out for Russia and China. It's not easy being a new parent. My girlfriend's daughter got me pulling my hair out, okay? That's it. Yep, that is totally worth writing all these articles about how Disney put a gay character in their movie. Wow, great, you did it. Corporations care about social issues, ha ha. On top of all that, a lot of the conflict seemed really forced. The whole you think I'm a screw up thing is super lame. And I guess without spoiling anything, the ending was pretty unsatisfying. It was a weird ass conclusion for the main character to come to and it was pretty unenjoyable. Anyway, this isn't the worst worst movie ever made, and it's certainly not the worst Pixar movie ever made. There are some aspects of the film that were well done, but unfortunately the core of the film is lacking any real soul. At the end of the day, it's just a below average Pixar movie, and I'm honestly starting to forget about it already. Check this one out if you want, who knows, you might enjoy it even if I didn't. And I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10.